like when we interview, we pay more attention to the person and who they are and their background and how they conduct themselves and then we do their work product that they're bringing in. Business of Architecture, episode 331. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enix Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building an architecture practice that lets you do your best work more often. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's step-by-step business training program for architects that shows you how to structure your practice so you can focus on doing your best work instead of being bogged down with the complexity of running a business. Build the business you need to do the work you want. Discover more by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart. Today, I speak with Jerry Merriman and Milton Anderson. Jerry Merriman is the founder and president of Merriman Anderson Architects based out of downtown Dallas, Texas. Opening as a small family business over 33 years ago, MAA now compromises 100 employees between their Dallas, Austin, and Charlotte offices. In 2019, MAA was ranked number 169 on Architectural Records' top 300 architecture firms list, and they've received many other awards and recognitions. The firm's project portfolio includes the two largest redevelopment projects in downtown Dallas's history, the $255 million renovation of the Statler Hotel and the $350 million renovation of the 52-story, 1.5 million square foot former First National Bank Tower, 1401 Elm. The 1401 Elm project is the largest renovation and abatement project in the state and one of the largest skyscraper conversions in the United States. So the firm has done some very large scale work. Milton Anderson, who's also joining us, is a partner at the firm and has been designing, directing, and master planning since 1986. He previously served as MAA's Director of Design in that position since 1997. His extensive experience covers a multitude of building types and sizes, each carefully tailored to the unique client, budget, and city. Milton and Jerry, welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Thank you. It's good to be here. Glad to be here. Jared, I'd like to ask you, first of all, how did the firm get started? What started this whole adventure? Wow. Uh, seems like, uh, well, it was 33 years ago. We just started our 34th year. And I had uh, been a partner in a, in a pretty large firm and was, um, I, I, I was tired of the paperwork side of it and I was we had 14 partners and I just needed a change. And so I resigned and that was in the mid eighties, late eighties when we were in a, we turned out to be in a pretty bad recession. And so I started the firm and my wife came in when they dropped the kids off of school, came in, typed my letters while I was sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. And I think she felt sorry for me because the phone never rang, but, um, that's how we started and we just grew we added a couple part-time people and then we we were able to catch a couple breaks and work came in and pretty soon we're five or six years old and then 23 years ago i was introduced to milton and we hit it off immediately we had the same goals and we needed milton's talent to take us to that next level Milton is a design guy. He's a he's an awesome designer, and um, I'm not, and so we needed that. And that these last 23 years we've been together have been amazing. And so mm-hmm. you know that's that's how we started. Very simply, from nothing. We we took no clients with us from the previous firm. We decided to go the high road. We didn't take any projects with us. We had relationships that we were able to build on, but we did it the right way, and that's how we did it. And it's you know when you look starting back, a firm in a recession, it, it I wouldn't imagine it'd be the easiest time to start a firm, or was it? 
you know, well, it wasn't real easy um, because everybody's out there scraping for work. The, the established firms were wanting work that I needed uh, that normally they wouldn't go after. So it was a challenge, but we we caught a couple lucky breaks. We had a client, a restaurant guy that I knew through our two kids in school, and he gave us a couple site adaptations for a national restaurant. We ended up doing those, and that kind of got the cash flow going, and um, that was right when we really needed it. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell you a story related to that when <clears throat> when Walt, this individual, gave us that project. About two weeks prior to that, I'd gone home uh, and I told Debbie, I said, I'm done. Debbie's my wife. And I said, I'm done. We're not going to make it. You know, I'd exhausted all of our savings. We'd borrowed from our parents. They were getting older. I couldn't borrow any more money from them. I didn't have any wealthy friends. So, and I said, we're done. And I started sending my resume out. And about a week later, Walt comes in with these projects. And that basically, we never looked back after that. So it's funny how that things like that happen. It, it is. It's you have to wonder. I mean, it's just in the nick of time, just when you thought you were going to get a job, and there you go. I know. I know. Yeah. So uh, we always tell people how lucky we've been on a lot of ways, but, I mean, that's all it is. Well, Milton, tell me about your career path. What ended you up working at the firm? And I assume at that time when you started, it wasn't Merriman Anderson Architects. But give us an <laughs> overview of, of your journey. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was not at that time, but, uh, but the thought was, uh, was planted, I think, uh, as we talked. But uh, I, I came from a really large firm also. I, I had planted there and, and probably could have been there and, and thought I would be there for my whole career. Um, a very good friend of mine had come to work with Jerry. This was in, I think he had gotten, Doug had started in 95, I think, and uh, had said, hey, our, our guy, our design guy's leaving. I think you'll really like Jerry. Why don't you just come say hello? And, um, and I didn't uh, for a little bit. And then about, oh, a year before I started, I did. I said, you know, let's get started and, you know, let's talk. And Jerry and I started talking and um, met with him. And then Doug was still there. and, and um, and, and Doug was like, you know, you got to do this. And then about six months before I started, Jerry actually talked me into working after hours to help <laughs> over there. But, but I think the, uh, the, the beauty was, and, and what I'll never forget is in our discussions, our one-on-ones for, for that period of time, we talked about what we wanted to do for the next 20 years. We see, you know, here's five, here's 10. What, where do we want to be in 20 years? Which was really impressive. You know, I had thought about my time, but never in such detail. We talked about it, and, and now we, we sit here and look and go, you know, our 20 years is behind us. We did it. We, we got there. And so there was a great vision. There was a great um, respect and understanding, and, uh, and I knew. And then the firm I worked with had a lot of great business guys. It was very, very tuned in. And Doug had told me, he said, yeah, those guys are good, but come meet Jerry. And, and we just, we did. We, we hit it off. Um, had, had a just it was special and we've like Jerry said we've never looked back I mean it has been um, it has taken every inch of everything we have at times and and we've put our heart into it and um, and we look forward to all of our tomorrows still so yeah it's been uh, and looking been looking good. at the 20 years what would you say have been the things that have turned out kind of how you expected them oh I I oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when we um, it's been what 14, almost 16 years ago that we moved from one location into downtown Dallas. When we moved in to Dallas, it was um, a little bit slower time, a little bit different. We had grown the staff. We were in a great building. Things were happening. There was a decision made that hey, we were going to adopt. And, and downtown Dallas was really empty and, and really um, not quite as vibrant, and really and alive as it is today. 
that we adopted three buildings uh, in downtown that had been empty, that were um, in need uh, of either they were going to be torn down or they were going to be restored uh, with adaptive reuse. And so we identified them, didn't talk to the owners really, um, looked at them, got in them, had divided the office into three teams, had leaders, and said, we're going to do this for a couple months and, and let's just do it in-house. And, and we did, and we made great presentations internally, really gave a lot of the staff an opportunity to talk and be a part of it. Um, we have done all of those projects today. Those three that we looked at, that we just adopted, those projects are alive and real and full now. So th that was, um, I, I just get excited about that too, that, you know, that that was kind of our beginning. And um, that, that we felt that strongly about being downtown, one, to move in the middle of downtown, two, to, um, to, to see these buildings. One is the Statler Hilton, which is uh, a great project. When you're, when you're in Dallas, you, you need to come see that. It's the Hilton Curio, fantastic. Uh, 1950s, mid-century modern, just just outstanding. The other is um, the Dallas Crozier Tech, the Dallas High School, which is a really special project. And, um, and, and we've got amazing leadership in our office right now that, that, that does that. That's been something that uh, we're fortunate to have a lot of. And then uh, 1401 Elm, which is at the, at the time was the, when it was built, it was the tallest building west of the Mississippi. And uh, it's actually uh, will be done what, before the end of next year, Jerry. Um, yeah, and, uh, it's going to start opening in, in September of this year. Yep. Yeah. So it's, uh, and you, those are special times. You know what related to that, what really, um, told me what, that we were going to get where we wanted to go was remember the competition we did at the ice house in deep Ellum? Milton, yeah, there were three or four firms. And I mean, we knocked it out of the park with that elevation. It was a competition. We did not win it, but our presentation was so good. I think it told me we're going to be able to go where we want to go design wise and compete with whoever we wanted to compete with. To me, mentally, that was a big turning point. Okay. Yeah, so, it, it, it really was. And that was one, probably one of the big first all-nighters. The entire office showed up to yeah. help and, and to put this deal together. Yeah. And, and it was just, it was pure energy for a couple of days. And, oh, um, it was, and it yeah, was we, we didn't exciting. win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. It's, it is interesting how the, sometimes those experiences, although you may not end up winning it, uh, the, the different collateral benefits that happen because of something like that sounds like that was a big and it's interesting jerry that you mentioned yeah, that psychological well, at least it sounds like that gave you kind of really confirmed your confidence about your ability to play at a very high level it did and i i think it it confirmed everything it confirmed what milton and i decided we wanted to do it's why he gave up probably a very very stable lucrative position from the firm he came from he gave that up to come over and take that risk with us I think it just it just put all those things together, saying, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Yeah. Mm. Now, looking at yeah. looking at what's transpired in that time, what things have happened that you would say they're unexpected, or things that you didn't expect, things that didn't turn out the way that you originally thought they would, if anything? Great oh question. gosh, uh, I don't know. That's a that's a good question. Well, you know we. Architects are used to ups and downs and recessions. I, I, uh, so you always think you're prepared. The, the 2009 cycle was a tough one, although it was, it surprised me how quickly we came out of it. It was very severe for a little while, but we were, we were lucky with a couple of clients that really brought us out of it really quickly. So that, that was one thing that, we didn't expect it to happen in the first place, but then I didn't expect the recovery for our firm like it did. Um, mm. What about you? I don't know, Milton. I, well, what, I, I, what I hasn't think, gone according to your plans? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I think, you know, again, things happen along the way, but I, I think the biggest thing that we've done and look back and, and we're, we're preparing now for, for our next, you know, what's our next 20 years? We're, we're having those discussions now. We've got, 
we've got some partners that along the way, which we knew we had talented people. We, we were always in search of that. You know, who is that, who is that person? And, um, and, you know, and, and, and I think we've got, we've got some new partners, but some of them started with us right out of college, 14, 16 years ago. And, you know, and, and, and firms tend to, a lot of people come and go. They do. But we've got so many people that have been with us 25 years, you know, 23 years, 17 years, 14 years, 14. So, so the longevity and the dedication of, and, and the continuity, which has allowed us to grow. And, and they're incredible architects and designers, you know, and, and we've built, now we've got a great interior group that is, that is in-house. That's probably one of the finest around. And we, we didn't expect that to be as good as it has been and has grown. You know, I think there's 13 people in that group now. Uh, that, that's part of our effort. But I think really we, we knew we wanted quality people and, and, but, but it's just, it's sustained itself through all of that. And, and they, they've ridden through those tough times as well. Because they're they're dedicated to that. They they know the vision. They see it, and and they too want this to be. They they've made careers out of being here, and and so it's um, it's really exciting. And it is kind of unusual at times, but um, you know everybody has turnover. But but that that has made us really who we are. You know, I didn't expect to feel as strongly about our p our employees and our people as I, as I have the last. Yeah. 30 years, you know, you go into a business and you, you say it's a business, but wow, you know, I, I just never thought we'd ever put together the type of people we have and really like those people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, Milton and I both worked in other firms where we just didn't have that. And so it continues to amaze me that we have that feeling. And I think it's a, that was not expected that yeah, yeah. that's probably the most important thing that's happened to us is just the quality of the people that have come over the workforce and have stayed with us but it's very very um uplifting to work around people that you like yeah we just didn't what, expect what would, it to go by so say... quickly go ahead <laughs> yeah what would you both say would be the most important attributes to attracting the right kind of people for your firm. You've been doing this a while. What advice would you give? Well, from my perspective, it, it's like anything. You know, once you've done something once, all of a sudden you're an expert. And and it's the same thing. The longer you're in business, the more, uh, you know, a little bit at a time you get more exposure. People hear about you a little bit more. So you're able to get the good graduates to come talk to you. Uh, so I think that's that's helped us. It's funny when like when we interview, we pay more attention to the person and who they are and their background and how they conduct themselves and than we do their work product that they're bringing in. We we rely so much on the the attitude and personality and so I think we kind of attract people that way that either hear about it or they come to a meeting, they meet Milton or they meet one of the other partners and they, they begin to say, Hey, you know, I picked up on something here. I, that's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. We just, um, you know, we, we can send and, and, and it's not a script. I think any of our partners and any of our leaders will go out and, and we we're comfortable sending them to any meeting or any university. Because we know that because they, they, they feel it, they understand it. This isn't a, a script or a rehearsed thing. I think they have, they've, uh, they drank the Kool-Aid, I guess. But, um, but no, it's, it's, that's the special side of it. You know, we've carried, you know, I mean, we, and we've, we've never forgotten our past. We know where we came from. We've still got clients right now that we had 22 years ago that have come back again. We're not afraid of uh, any kind of project. We, we've been blessed with, amazing projects of great size, incredible design, just, just incredible. But we've also got, you know, the, the other side of that, we, we cut our teeth on, on restaurants and, and tilt wall buildings. And, um, and we do that. That's, that's still a part of, of where we are and what we do. And so the scale of our projects is fantastic, but it, it's about as broad as you can get. And we can handle all that and we do it. And I think that's what everybody that comes likes that because they can have a project 
We just finished an 8,000 square foot office building. Then we put a couple young people on with one of the leaders. There's a sense of ownership, a sense of pride, and, and, and this completion that allowed them to, you know, we've got projects that last four years as well. But um, I, I think that's, we, we talk about that. We talk about the hats you wear and we start from, from, from design to, to turning the lights on. And, um, and we've delivered that. And I, and I think the, our, all of our staff sees that and they're a part of it. So I think that's, that's really a great way to, to develop as, as architects and designers. I always Looking back, what would you say would be the keys to actually keeping the people? keeping people around, what do you think has been your secret sauce in that area? Is it just that the people, they're the kind of people that want to stay someplace in a long time? Or is there something special you think you're doing that's keeping them engaged, wanting to stay there? Uh, I, I, think I think they like Debbie. <laughs> Who's yeah, Debbie? I, Debbie <laughs> still, by the way, the same <laughs> Debbie that, that uh, you know, started doing my letters for me is still with the firm. She's stayed with the firm. She does some of our day-to-day, -day, you know, financials. And, but I, I do think, all kidding aside, um, she's probably the first person somebody turns to and knows they can turn to. And they turn, they mm -hmm. also know they can pick the phone up and talk to Milton or me or some of our other partners about anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. We we have helped people through the years in a lot of ways, I think, and we've done it not expecting any payback. We've had people that have been in trouble. We've helped them with a car. We've had people as they lose their parents and help them with expenses. And, and it's just everybody knows that they're going to get that help. And so... I think they may come in thinking, well, I'm going to stay here three years and I'll move on down the road to another place. And then three years goes by and they've been to our company events and they've sensed they've gotten a feel for what we're doing and they've made some great friendships and they, they yeah. three years turns to five and five years turns to 10. Yeah. But I do yeah, when we know when uh, people care. Yeah. The people care when we, and, and when we interview people, uh, young people out of school uh, or whatever we're doing, I, 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 I'll I talk to them and I'll, I'll, I'll meet them. But then what I do is I, I bring other staff that's been in here a year uh, right out of school or, or, or six months or two years because they, they know and they have a fiance. You can talk to them. I'm going to leave the room. You all have ask the questions, talk about what the culture is like, talk about what their year has been like. Because they're a better barometer than I am. I, I, I'm, you know, fortunate. I've been here a long time, and I'm going to tell you only the good things. But I said, and, and I, and I tell our staff, just be honest with them, talk to them, and, uh, and, and that's what most of the time they come back out and say thank you. I'll get a note say, you know, what? I really enjoyed meeting all of them. It was they really reiterated what you said, told it, and it, it's, it's more than a story. They, they love it. They love what they're doing. So sign me up, and, and that happens a, a lot of the time. It does. And, you know, like you go to a wedding, one of our younger people's getting married, half mm -hmm. people are there from the firm. You go to a funeral when somebody's grieving. A lot of the people there are, are from the firm. You go to somebody's birthday party, happy hour. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people at the firm. And, and they're not there mm -hmm. just because the other, you, they felt you, they had to invite those people. They're there because they wanted them there. So, I don't. I don't know. You yeah. just. You, you. You can't deliberately create that. It just happens. And yeah, and the 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 younger staff babysits for the older staff at times, so that they become part yeah. of the family. Because a lot of them, uh, you know, their families in Oklahoma, their families in, you know, in in St. Louis or something, and they're here, and so they get they come in and they're like, oh, I want to, I'll help you, and and then it's just an instant, you know, it's it, it, it's a family. It truly is. Jerry, what would you say would be has been the most difficult part about having a growing firm, of having growth? Because you started out just you and your wife, family business, and now you're up to 75 team members. Right. Um, I think it, the competition, Dallas and Texas has tremendous architects. They're really good. And I mean, 
I can name you 20. Right. And so it's a competitive world out there and it's really competitive for us. So I think, you know, just we want to grow. We don't want to necessarily grow in numbers, but we want to grow in the types of projects and the types of clients we work for. So just, um, that's a step at a time. So the competition in that, you know, plays into that. And so you're always looking for your next project and you're always in the business development mode. And because you know, if you're competing against the other firms that are, you know, we're, we're normally in the top 10 in the business journal type rankings or top 15, but you're, you're competing against those 15 firms it's always on your mind and I, that I, I never yeah. forget that. I'm always looking for, for where do we go next? That, I think that's a difficult thing. And so I try not to let it wear on me because it's just part of business. And um, it's getting easier as our firm grows because we have more people, you know, we have more people that are shouldering a lot of that responsibility. Don't you think it's been easier, Milton? It, it seems to me my job's been easier as we've grown with our capabilities. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It is. And, and again, that comes with this group that has been with us for a long time, and, and they know. And so it, it, everyone's shouldered more than their share, and, uh, and, and it's made it much smoother. And uh, it allows us to do more. Again, I think the idea is that those freedoms of really reaching out even further and, and Jerry's done that for a long time and, uh, and continuing those connections, which when you know the rest of the house is running really good and it, it gives you that, that at least comfort of knowing that I can, I can go a little bit different way here knowing that everything else is, is all the bases are covered. So that, that's been really good. Yeah. And you know, I think you're talking about what challenges we face. I face yeah the challenges the so it's the challenges of growth really like the challenges of growth and right. you mentioned that you mentioned that one of the biggest challenges I at least what I heard you say was that just finding the next project wondering about what's next and you said that that look that's just part of business and at times that can be stressful but you've gotten used to understanding that there's always right. the next project to feed that lar large staff yeah and I think that's why we spend so much time planning for the future the old saying is, is true. I, I, you know, you can't change what's happened to your past. You can learn from it, but we are always looking ahead. We never stop. And where do we want to go? Who do we want to work for? How do we get that work? So it's always on your mind. And, you know, I, I think we face the decision at Merriman to, to, you know, not be afraid of the future and to, embrace it you know i watched my dad with his small company and he had a decision when he was near retirement that he could have bought out a couple other of his competitors and, and taken the next step and grown a little bit he decided not to in fact he ended up selling to one of those but i it's always been in the back of my mind you know milton and i've had people approach us before about uh purchasing purchasing the firm and we decided no we're gonna we're going with this alone we're gonna be that hybrid firm that that came up from its own roots and we don't have a mothership we are our own you know we're, we're creating our own destiny we just we both want that and we have an agreement with each other that neither one of us can enter into some type of agreement like that without the full or enter any discussions without the full blessing right. of the other. That's good. That's good. I think it was, um, you know, not like if you listen to my interview with Eugene, A. Eugene Cohn in KPF, he said that unfortunately that happened to him. They, they set up a partner over in, I think it was England in the UK. And that partner started to entertaining conversations with other people and then basically called up the main office and said, hey, by the way, we're splitting off. Wow. Yeah. It, it so, can happen. So it, it, yeah, it does goes happen. back to trust. You know, I, I'll trust Milton 
you know, I'll put it all out there for him. I trust him totally. I think he trusts me. Uh, yeah. We've got, you know, it's just what you've got to do. And that, so that's what I mean. It, things get easier for all of us as we've grown because we've brought in more expertise and more talent. And we have more people yeah. in responsible positions. As you're looking at motivating your staff, as you're looking at keeping the best people, have you implemented any sort of incentive compensation plan? Do you have any employee stock ownership? How does the financial side of it work for your employees? Any incentives there? Yeah, um, we we don't have a uh, we have profit sharing, a two tier profit sharing. Uh, and how does that work, but, Jerry? Could you ex- tell us about that? Yeah, we uh, we distribute a portion of our profits every year in cash in bonuses that are merit based, and we also contribute a portion of profits to the four hundred one k of of our employees. And and when you say merit based, how do you determine the merit? What is that based on? It's based on attitude, performance, longevity with the company. Uh, loyalty not necessarily did they go through a project that didn't achieve what we expected profit that it's not so much that because there's so many circumstances on projects and i think that's why we haven't gone to a project profit sharing basis because it's not fair so we do it based on just who they are and how they've conducted business and how are how have they really bought into who we are and are they running their projects well, regardless of what our clients might do to mess it up? <laughs> and so it's that kind of thing. So we, and we distribute our, our money at the year end. We, we are all about getting good salaries and good bonuses in front of our people. We want these guys well paid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we talk a lot about, I mean, we, we, we work a lot, you know, and that's the thing about us also still to this day, you know, Jerry's working 55, 60 hours a week. I mean, we, we, it's just what we do. It's what we've always done. And, and we're committed to, to always that extra, but, but we do. And we ask a lot of people a lot of times, I mean, and you, but you know, um, but we, we, those little things like paying overtime, you know, when we have to do that, when, when it's really part of the scheme and a lot of places don't. You know, and we take care of our interns and, and we do hire interns every summer at our school. We don't we don't just get them in there and abuse them. We make them part of the effort and, and they get paid and, and they they see that effort and they know what's coming down the pipe. And I think that's really important uh, in our profession. And so we 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 share that and um, mm. and everybody looks forward to it. So we work hard for it. Now, you two have been, and this will be my last question for today, you two have been through a number of recessions, so you've seen things like this before. And as of this recording, it's not officially in a, a recession yet, but we, we all know where this train is headed. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. There's there's some economic impact because of the COVID thing happening right now. So as you look at, obviously, the pandemic is unprecedented, but as you look into going into another recessionary cycle, potentially, based upon your experience, what is both of your attitude about this? I'm just curious about how you how you view this and how you're going to take advantage of this or protect your firm during these times. Yeah, well, we've, um, I can't. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead no. Jer. No, please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, and then, then let, let Jerry finish up there. But we've, I mean, we 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 we've conquered it. We we've looked at what we have. We we don't um, we don't run. You know, there, there there's monies there to be. We we tighten the belt. Let's say we we've looked at it that way. We've seen more, we've had more interviews. I've had more interviews via, uh, like this, uh, with new clients. I think we, what we've seen in the past probably month is, is there's this feeling that, you know what, yes, this, no one sees it as a full-blown recession. They see it as a, a pretty major hiccup in, 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 in an economic speed bump like we've never seen in our whole life. And, and it is different. It's such an anomaly. But uh, but through that, our attitude is that, you know what, yeah, we've got projects that are stopping. We've got others that are, are getting tuned in. We do a lot of hospitality work. A lot of that's hurt very well. But, but on the other side, we've, we've been interviewed for some really big projects that are continuing. Our, our projects that are under construction 
and uh, well, I'll back up a little bit more. We've got great projects now that are that have been in conceptual work and in schematic and in through every phase of what we do. Every, we've had things in those um, in those buckets, so to speak, and uh, and we're just we're just going to continue to pedal. We dedicate extra time. We're willing to give a little more. I think you know we've got a great design. We've got a group that um, is spending a lot of time on conceptual work. We do master planning work. So we're really putting it out there, and our clients are asking for a little bit more, and then we're willing to give it, and we're going the extra mile because they, too, I think probably 75% of them feel like, you know what, there is there is a light out there, and so help us get there, and we will all we will all arrive together. But uh, we, just, we just haven't treated it like doom and gloom. All of our staff is still in place. You know, and we, we've not eliminated anyone. Uh, we're riding through this together. And um, they know that our expectations are high and, um, and we will, we will overcome this, uh, this craziness. Again, it, that I, we view it as that anomaly. And, um, you know, we've been real smart about sending everyone and making sure they're healthy, making sure their families are taken care of, um, making sure that they're all checking on their priorities, that, that that's, that's first and foremost, because keeping them healthy and, uh, and in their place, so we, we've all adapted to this new way of, of working together. But uh, our communication has changed. I think it's gotten stronger. But um, but I think that's I, I just we will get there. It, it's going to be a slow climb. I, I, I think on some of our work, it could be a year out or or six months out. I don't know. But we're going to do it um, as the unit that we've been. I mean, what do you think, Jer? Uh, yeah, I I echo that, and we've always been um paid a lot of attention to the business side of our firm too we we obviously have to compete design wise but we do pay a lot of attention to business we protect our cash we we don't borrow money to run the firm we're so we've maintained levels of cash to, to keep the firm going and feel very confident about weathering these next seven, eight months, which we think are going to be the worst. I personally think 2021 is just going to be phenomenal. I think it's going to be a very special year for our profession because if we weather the storm and we get people back to whatever our new way of doing things is, uh, life is going to continue. And I, I really, really think 2021 is going to be really good. Excellent. So I'm hearing lots of optimism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Fantastic. Well, th th thank you, Milton and, and Milton Anderson and Jerry Merriman for being here with us, sharing your experience, a conversation about your firm and about what it's taken to grow it to the size it is. We wish you much success and thank you for being here on the Business of Architecture show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the conversation that I had with our guest today. Jerry Merriman and Milton Anderson. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, the world's leading step-by-step -step business training program that's helped over 103 architecture firm owners structure their existing practice so the complexity of running a business doesn't get in the way of their architecture. Because you see, it, it isn't the architecture design skills that are holding you back. It's the complex, complexity of running a business, managing projects and people, dealing with clients, contractors, and money. So if you're ready to simplify the running of your practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash training to discover the proven, simple, and easy to implement smart practice method for running a practice that doesn't get in the way of doing exceptional architecture. The views expressed on this show by my guest do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.